All right, we're, we're here in the Tesla for hour number, I think, eight, seven or eight now driving from Vermont back to New Jersey. But, uh, and I'm here with the proud owner of a 2022 Two. Volkswagen ID4. And I'm gonna ask all about it and how he's enjoying it after, how long have we had it? Seven months? Seven months. Big seven month update, as is tradition. <laughs> so stay with yes. us. <laughs> All right, so you had quite the journey getting your ID4 yeah. uh, after. Was it delays or just. No, I guess not delays, but just took a long time to from when you ordered it to get it, right? It took a while. <clears throat> there were a couple delays. How long did it take? from ordering to getting? Well, approximately one year. Okay. And that was, so that was a 2022, right? So that was when it was coming from Europe. Right. Uh, and now now they're finally getting built in uh, Tennessee. Tennessee. I think I've seen that they're generally coming a little bit faster, but yes. not too much. Um, yes. So what, what uh, as the first time owner of an electric vehicle, uh, for people that didn't watch the last one where we talked about this already, uh, what led you to getting or deciding to go with an electric car and why'd you pick an ID4? We needed two cars for our jobs in Colorado and we wanted to buy it, our first car to be an electric car. So we were looking around, shopping around, and we're looking at Tesla, the Audi e tron. Volkswagen was, I was kind of familiar. <laughs> of course, we, we know and we like Volkswagen. And it was a little less in the price range and offered an SUV with four wheel drive, all wheel drive for Colorado with two motors. So that's kind of why we went with it. And it was at a good price point mm -hmm. until all of the delays <laughs> actually. <laughs> Uh, made the price rise a little, but not too much. Uh, so we ordered a 2021, waited so long that we ended up getting a 2022, which apparently is hopefully better because it's they've worked out some of the kinks. And I believe it can handle over-the-air software updates. Have, have you gotten updates from it? Like you haven't. Even from taking it in the dealership or anything? Have they like they no. called you in? They haven't called us in yet. Okay. They haven't called for nothing. They're still trying to figure out how to like roll those out for, for I soda. think they are yeah I think they're still trying to figure them out and I, I'm hoping we have one this year mm -hmm. some big update actually no I think there was one but that was just right before we got the car actually okay so it was already included yeah yeah I forgot I don't remember the exact versions I think there's been like three big versions the first yeah. one was from what I'd seen like very uh, a little bit buggy but like just kind of laggy and the second one fixed a lot of the laggy stuff. Yeah. And then uh, this most recent one, I think, is what enables actual over-the-air one uh, updates. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. like, in order to get that version, base version of the software to be uh, have the capability to get over-the-air updates, you have to go in to get it to updated to that one. So, and since like there's no reason to get any maintenance on the car, since there's no oil changes or no. anything, they're not going to have you come in unless something breaks. Right. Yeah. That ability to have over-the-air was before we got it. Before it was delivered yeah and it took forever to, to be delivered and then all of a sudden the last two weeks was like oh by the way it's here mm -hmm. and we still it still said your car will be here in two or three weeks <laughs> but it was already here that that was i had a very similar experience with the the ford um mustang maki it was uh mm -hmm. Um, you know, I got an update. I, I got like no communication at all until uh, for about six months after ordering the car, until I got an update that the car was in production. Um, then I got another update that it was shipping, and that it should take like 14 days or something. And then nothing for another like two months. And then all of a sudden it was, mm -hmm. you know, oh, your car is ready. When are you picking it up? Uh, yeah. And of course we didn't. But uh, <laughs> it was wasn't the most uh, proactive thing. Uh, and so the, uh, okay, so you got the car. Um, and now, now having an electric car, how how has it compared with what you expected? Are there any like big differences? Anything uh, worse than what you're expecting or better? 
Uh, I think the... I mean, it's pretty much what I expected, except the in the cold, of course, the battery drains significantly. Your range decreases a lot faster, and you have to try and not look at the mileage, but the percentage of the battery mm -hmm. helps a little bit better because you can, getting down to 30%, you still have 30% of battery, but you might have like 45 miles, yeah. which isn't great, but um, yeah, in the winter, it's when it's really cold, the battery drains significantly. Right. So, I wish the range was a little better, I feel like, from my experience. But my wife drives it a lot, and she loves it. She thinks it's great. It's, it's pretty much her car. <laughs> uh, she yeah. sees that, yeah, it goes down in the winter, but it's also fine in the summer. We yeah. get over 220, 30 miles at 80%, so it's fine. Oh, wow, it's, okay. about, it's about what it should be. And you said in the winter at 80%, you're only getting like 180? Yeah, like 180. Yeah. If you get over 200, you're uh -huh. you're lucky. Yeah, I forget. I don't remember on the... I don't think the ID4 has um, a heat pump uh, to... No, I don't think so. To like specifically put uh, heat into the battery. But like when you just run the climate control, I'm pretty sure it does. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it, all electric cars are kind of like that. When it's cold, you just you get a much less efficiency out of the battery. So, right. you know, even for the same amount of charge, you're getting a lot me uh, less uh, mileage. Mm -hmm. um, keeping it in, like, a garage and, uh, like, plugged in overnight <laughs> where it can kind of keep itself warm yeah. can help with that. But, uh, you know, especially in, in the mountains in Colorado where it's yeah. you're, you're actually having a winter this year, unlike us, yes. uh, it is definitely worse. Yeah, and, and speaking of charging, I think that's something... Um, something that's, I don't know, really nice about it is that we can just charge it and not, not pay for gas. Our, our gas bill, fuel bill has gone down significantly, mm -hmm. um, having one, one electric car, but, um, uh, also for three years free charging at EA stations, that was another big draw for, yeah. So I think there's, there's like um, getting the Volkswagen for for being a person who lives in the suburbs where it's just easy for us to get uh, like um, 240 volt mm -hmm. outlet in the uh, in our house and everything. I forget like there are a lot of people that aren't in that situation that can't charge uh, at home or like you know if they're going to charge would have to trickle charge on like a 110 outlet which is what you guys have right. That's what we have yeah. And so like for you and I think a lot of other people don't necessarily charge at home but like charge either at work or even like in between right. home and work right. So you said you. Yeah, we're, we're doing kind of both. Rebecca does both. She charges at work when she can or when she needs to. And then if we need to just give it a little extra, we'll charge it at home overnight. And it gets, it's actually, sometimes I feel like it gets about three miles an, an hour charging, mm -hmm. roughly. Uh, but probably standard is two. We did take it up to Dillon up in the mountains. And I think it took, oh, I forget the hours. 18 hours over the weekend uh -huh. just to to charge from 50 to 80 mm -hmm. i think i'd have to check that again but, but off, off of like a um just off a regular, of one outlet? regular yeah. um 110 outlet mm -hmm. um wow yeah so yeah pre pretty good um i mean so we didn't have to take it to charge anywhere up there mm -hmm. but um, yeah regularly we she charges at work and we charge it at home on a 110 if we need to mm -hmm. and we're looking I guess in the next couple of years to get a 220 yeah or a level two charger rather and then you said like since you've got the free charging uh, mm -hmm. on EA you do that periodically too do that that as well yeah. yeah which yeah. I, th I think you see a lot of ID4 owners doing when you can't really blame it like I mean it, you're being encouraged to do that by it being free so like you're, you're, free, you're better off doing that than even charging at home where you have to pay for electricity right and I'll take it to the store set a timer for 30 minutes, charge it, mm -hmm. go in, get a couple oh, yeah. things, and come out, and it's it's charged from, you know, 40 to 77%. Mm -hmm. how, how does it work after, so you get 30 minutes for, is like unlimited, but it ha it's only for 30, 30 minutes, minute right? stretches, yeah. And then it just knows and it'll start charging you after that? Right, it's, it starts okay. uh, charging you after 30 minutes, and then mm -hmm. once you stop charging, there's a 10 minute um, uh, well, yeah. grace period yep. before you're, you're charged yep. and you technically have to move the car. So you could do multiple 30 minute mm -hmm. charges if you wanted to. Yeah. And, and I guess when it, it, it probably is, I mean, since it always looks like it's free, you probably don't even notice, but it looks like EA often 
doesn't even charge you anyway. Like there, there are a ton of times yeah. when it seems like they're just giving like free, uh, free charging over weekends and holidays and stuff. Half the time it'll say 43 cents mm -hmm. per kilowatt or something like that. Yep. Does that sound right? Yeah. That's yeah. Um, but it's, it, if I go over the 30 minute, nothing, I won't be charged sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's just free. Yep. So I, I think their system is, they're still figuring out their infrastructure. Yeah, it's, I mean, I think it's a good thing that like they, if anything is not working optimally, it seems like they uh, bias toward just making it free. Right. Um, but yeah, I think it's 43 cents uh, per kilowatt mm -hmm. uh, hour um, for regular rate and it's 30, oh no, it's, 32, it's, 36 yeah, uh, if you're on the membership plan. Mm -hmm. But if you're getting th free charging anyway, there's yeah. no reason for a membership plan. Um, although I did see they're going to increase those rates uh, soon. Um, I think by like yes, they, yeah, they're eight or ten cents. We well, got an email a little while ago mm -hmm. saying they're going to increase them this spring, I believe. Okay. Um, yeah. And, and how did like yeah. how did you find the the charging and everything? You did a you've done a couple of road trips, right? Uh, I mean, yeah, we did a road trip out to Kansas City mm -hmm. from Denver area, and charging worked really well. The 350 kilowatt chargers, mm -hmm. mostly on the highway. Or along the highway, so you can get a faster charge and work pretty well. Um, and we only charge it to only need to charge it to eighty percent. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we wish it. We were done in half an hour, and it was maybe only got up to seventy from like twenty to seventy percent. Okay, yeah. But it it made us uh, made it last till the next charger. Yeah, we could. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that I've never thought about like for for this. You know, I'm trying to optimize overall like travel time mm -hmm. so it's just whatever like fastest charger i can get mm -hmm. that kind of works out being almost as far as possible between them so that i'm coming in like at the lowest but for you it's sort of that but it's also like optimized for 30 minute increments so like Pretty it's much. better to stop a little bit more frequently yeah it's it's better to stop more frequently and, and it's apparently better for the battery mm -hmm. than waiting too long but the chargers from denver to kansas city are placed almost exactly right where you need to stop at each mm -hmm. one. How many times do you have to stop um, on that? I think we stopped one, two, th three, four times. Oh, wow. Okay. If I remember right. Mm -hmm. And the lower the battery, then when you charge it, mm -hmm. the more kilowatts mm -hmm. will, uh, yeah, it'll start at more kilowatts to increase your battery mm -hmm. faster. And then once it gets to a higher percentage, that lowers. Yeah. Um, and I'm trying to remember the video we saw a year and a half ago now, <laughs> um, where the guy took a road trip from like Florida to Denver and mm -hmm. just what the kilowatts were on, on his charges. But yeah, uh, I, um, I can't remember. I've, I've seen but, some too. I think yeah. I think ID four is like there, there's a much little like around two hundred, like one eighty something like one one eighty one ninety yeah. maybe kind of max. Mm -hmm. um, but like a pretty pretty kind of flat curve which is good like meaning it doesn't doesn't tail off significantly like the, right. this the the model y when you plug in if you're like below 30 ish percent you'll take and you plug in at like a 250 kilowatt charger you'll get 250 but that only lasts oh. until like 30 percent or so then it kind of right. kicks down to like okay. yeah. 180 190 and then once you get up into like 70 ish percent it goes all the way down into like uh like 60 70, 60, 70 yeah. um, and then if you go above like 80 it's down into like the I've seen like teens and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and I, if I remember right, one of their things, it was a little, a little confusing, but I think they said a full charge from 20 to 80 percent was 38 minutes. Okay, yeah, that's not which writes, but they only give you half an hour free sessions. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so sometimes it, yeah, yeah, you don't get that whole charge. But yeah, yeah, but I mean, if, yeah, even if you're going 20 to it's 75 or 78, whatever is, it's close fine. Yeah. Oh, that's great. And then um, you don't have any issues going up into the mountains when, you, even though you're climbing uh, several thousand feet of altitude and no, stuff. No, right? we did that twice: one to go hiking and one to go up skiing. And I was trying not to freak out, trying to stay calm, mm -hmm. uh, because it, it just decreased so much going up the mountain. Mm -hmm. But then once we came back down, it, it settled, and it yeah. our mileage and our percentage either I think increased both increased mm -hmm. just going down the hill yeah from, yeah yeah um and so then uh so, so how do you like the car uh, do you regret getting it or no I, I like it it's it's really good 
Rebecca loves it. Mm -hmm. um, I really like the regenerative braking mode too, mm -hmm. where you can put it in drive or regenerative braking mode, and it, anytime you let your foot off the gas, it's the oh, I forget the term now, but it'll start braking for you mm -hmm. as soon as you let off the gas. Yeah. Um, yeah that's then, what I'm doing now, and which in this traffic that we're just sitting in has been quite right. nice. And so sometimes I'll accidentally have it in drive. Mm -hmm. And I'm, why is the, I'll take oh, my yeah, foot yeah. off and yeah. realize why isn't it braking? It's it's, it's funny how off. fast you get used to it. Yeah, mm -hmm. like when I when I drive our other car, which is yeah. in, not an EV, um, it's the same thing. Like it, it's weird when you take your foot off and like you you know you coast and you slow down a little bit, but you're kind of yeah. expecting like why is it not slowing down all of the way? Mm -hmm. uh, so nice. And uh, what about for your uh, second car? I know you're not like necessarily looking for a replacement right now, but I am. Would you? Oh, you are? Okay. <laughs> I'm looking. What, I'm what not buying, but okay. I'm looking. I, I don't know. Looking would you get an, another EV? Another EV or another SUV. Uh, mm -hmm. Probably. I'm also th thinking about a hybrid, maybe. Mm -hmm. maybe. I don't know if they're still the best or not mm -hmm. since it's all changed to either or but i don't know about another ev maybe another mm -hmm. we'll see yeah, yeah. We'll see what happens it's, with life too and circumstances <laughs> what we're what yeah. we require exactly yeah yeah it's, it, i think it's you know it, we're we're still not we're we're a one ev one uh non-ev family yeah. we're likely going to switch to two evs but um we'll have to see how that is it's it's weird not having the safety net uh, of a non-EV. Right. Um, and I think it's kind of hard to, it, it's hard to pull that cord and it might be a little bit early for, I think, most people to do that fully if you have the option of having two cars. Right. Uh, but you were just saying there's a, a, a t Tiguan or a Touring? Tiguan. Tiguan uh, EV uh, plan for 2026. So maybe maybe just wait till that. Until then. Yeah, maybe. Um, yeah, we'll <laughs> see what life throws at us. We don't really need a new car right now. Yeah. I started just looking and but we don't need one. Nice. We awesome. don't need a three row vehicle yet. Yeah. Well, there's not that many. Yeah, that's that's the, the challenging spot. There's right. th there's more coming out, but most of them are either like brand new and they're very hard to get like the Rivian or, um, I mean, I guess the, the Model X is not new, but the wait times on those are still super long. Yeah. Um, and I think there's the Mercedes, I forget which one, Mercedes e EQ something, mm -hmm. that's maybe. Uh, and then BMW, um, uh, which one is there? Uh, the five or the seven? Uh, it, it's is it? the uh, uh, IX. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. IX, IX is this? Is the SUV? Anyway, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get slammed in the comments for not remember keeping track of all of these. But anyway, there's there's like four or five on the market basically, and mm -hmm. they're either or actually pretty much all of them are ridiculously expensive, yeah. <laughs> like luxury SUVs. Uh, there's really not uh, much in the way of affordable. Uh, three-row EV SUVs right now yeah and we so back when we were looking uh, we were looking at the e-tron mm -hmm. and the salesman told us it's the same battery and same system mm -hmm. as the ID4 yeah it's just basically more expensive mm -hmm. and more premium a couple more premium features so yeah um, but I think because it's heavier and and stuff uh, you actually get like less range yeah yeah uh, probably yeah I think it's like 230 mm -hmm. e-tron Okay. Uh, I really, I do want an Audi. I like Audis, but who knows if that's in the future? Yeah, and see what they end up coming out with. It yeah. seems like they're like the, the Volkswagen Group stuff. Their their platform is expanding right. a lot now. Like they've got the uh, ID Buzz uh, mm -hmm. in Europe now, and they're coming to the US. In, oh, one second, but and um, uh, then there's the ID uh, Three that's been in Europe and not coming yes. to the US. The ID Five. The <laughs> Axel, give me a second. Um, and and I think uh, oh, what was that? Possibly the ID two, maybe. Okay. Or yeah. or is that I forget. Yeah, um, I don't remember. Their, their models confuse me. But anyway, but they've got mm -hmm. a ton of stuff like coming out in the next couple of years. Uh, yeah, and so I, it's options. it's possible we'll venture out outside the Volkswagen group of sure of vehicles. You just gonna just to change Porsche next. Yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> nice. Just All in right. case something happens, who knows? Uh, it's, it might be actually good to have two different brands of vehicles in case there's some sure. kind of recall or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah especially in, in, uh, especially if they're all kind of built on the same right. uh, underlying thing. Like they're you're more likely if something is bad on one to be on you know bad on all of them. 
Uh, yeah, but we love it. I love the design of the look of it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, nice. just gotta get a ski rack or a <laughs> or a, or a tule, some kind of <laughs> container to hold all our stuff. Maybe eventually. Mm -hmm. Does it come with a roof rack? Yes. Well, okay. yeah, so it comes with with yeah. rails. We just need crossbars. To, oh, okay. Yep. To install for anything. Yeah. So. Uh, nice. All right. Well, it sounds like you are in a hitch. Ha yeah. You need to tow stuff across <laughs> the country. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and get the U-Haul out. Yeah. Uh, awesome. All right. Well, it sounds like you are uh, happy with your EV purchase and uh, adopting right. the, the lifestyle. So yes. Uh, hopefully, if if you can do it, anybody can do it, right? Yeah. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, if we can do it at five thousand feet. Anyone can do it. Here. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, Axel. Just a minute. Um, all right, with that, let, let's uh, let me wrap up so I can find out what What's what he wants. Yeah. Uh, and I think we're almost out of this traffic finally. So with that, thank you so much for watching, and we will catch you in the next one. Bye.